people who attack your company unethically need to get crushed on the wheels of justice. If that makes me ruthless to have that attitude, well, I'm ruthless. Welcome to the Spinoso Podcast. I'm your host, Dr. Alex Spinoso. My experience and expertise is in scaling all types of medical businesses to seven, eight, and nine figures. And I'm sharing my journey to having multiple eight-figure companies and someday, hopefully, enjoying a nine-figure exit. This isn't a podcast telling you, you should do this. I'm just telling you how I did this, and I hope that helps you. I want to help you build your business, take ownership of your life, and become a better leader at home and at work. And guys, I'd love to connect with you, especially if you're a medical entrepreneur. I have free courses available to help you scale your medical business. Check those out at dralexspinoso.com slash courses. That is D-R-A-L-E-X-S-P-I-N-O-S-O dot com slash courses. I also invite you to connect with me on Instagram at Dr. Alex Spinoso, LinkedIn at the same, and every other platform, YouTube, etc. I am always Dr. Alex Spinoso. Thanks for listening. Welcome to the Spinoso Podcast. I'm your host, Dr. Alex Spinoso. And guys, today I'm just going to get right into it. Let's talk about being ruthless. And not to sound like a teacher, but the dictionary defines ruthless as having no pity, merciless, cruel. Hmm. Very successful people, entrepreneurs and otherwise, have often been accused of being ruthless. Some people say you can't actually succeed in business without being ruthless. I'm going to talk about that today. And right away, I want to set the record straight that I don't know that I like equating ruthlessness with being merciless or cruel. But here's how I see it. If by being ruthless, you mean that a leader needs to be very exacting in holding people to the consequences of their action, absolutely, you need to be ruthless. Like anything, you need to evaluate the situation and base it off of facts, not feelings. Was what happened a mistake or a hiccup in someone's actual integrity? Or was it an expression of their character. If it was the former, then, hey, it's up to your judgment how much mercy you want to extend. I myself am very merciful when it comes to that. But if it's the latter, you have to come down like a hammer. You aren't being a tyrant. You are being a surgeon. You are destroying the cancer that threatens the rest of your body, cutting it out meticulously. In that case, ruthlessness is a virtue. If By ruthlessness, you mean a willingness to destroy any unethical attempts to hurt your business? Absolutely, you need to be ruthless. I was told long ago by a very successful entrepreneur that if I was to succeed, I needed to carry a big stick. I needed to have a legal team to destroy people when they try and scam me, when they try and hurt my company, or when they try and go against me. Is there a place for mercy here? No, probably not. It's like being the president of the United States. If the POTUS doesn't deal with a shitty little country that defies the USA and hurts its citizens, what happens? It emboldens other shitty little countries to do the same. You have to make an example of people, sometimes publicly. And when they do something unethical, wipe them out. Technically, this is not vengeance. This is justice. This is protecting yourself. People who attack your company unethically need to get crushed on the wheels of justice. If that makes me ruthless to have that attitude, well, I'm ruthless. You know the Godfather saying, it's not personal, it's business. I think you can be ruthless professionally, but bear no ill will toward people personally. There's a great scene in the movie The Patriot where the ruthless English Colonel Tavington rounds up the colonial townspeople, locks them in the church, and then says, if you give me the information I want, you will be forgiven. The townspeople give him the information, but then he sets the church on fire with them in it. They scream, you said we'd be forgiven. And he coldly responds, and indeed you shall, but that's between you and God. Translation, you rebelled against the king, God may forgive your soul, but you still have to pay the consequences. It's a great analogy for business. You fuck with me, I'm going to destroy you ethically. But I don't hope your kids get hit by a car or your wife 
cheats on you. Personally, I'm not attacking you. But if you attack me, I will defend myself and my people. And okay, sometimes in the heat of emotion, I do hope that. But then I regain actual reason. I don't really want that. President Ronald Reagan and House Speaker Tip O'Neill were fierce rivals in politics, but friends in real life. When asked how that was possible, Reagan said, cocktails in the evening, pistols at dawn. The truth is, at the highest levels, there is a deep respect between rival entrepreneurs. It would be disrespectful not to engage the battle with all the ruthlessness and relentlessness you could actually muster. It's not personal, it's business. I think at the end of the day, low-level people accuse overachievers of ruthlessness when really all we are is relentless. True entrepreneurs are serious-minded people. We don't have time to joke around. It doesn't mean we can't have fun or be lighthearted, but we are serious about success. We are serious about working hard. We are serious about building something real. Business to us is not a game. We aren't here to goof around, make friends, posture with each other, and talk about how awesome our lives are to other people like you would when you won the high school national championship. No, people who aren't serious and are goofing around are not succeeding. So instead of being honest with themselves, they just slander real entrepreneurs. Instead of admitting our excellence and hard work, they slander our character. But real entrepreneurs really don't care about those accusations. Gods don't worry about the opinions of insects.